In every state and territory in Australia, doctors, nurses and teachers are required by law to report cases of child abuse to protection authorities. We as doctors and nurses and health professionals and even teachers have a duty of care to children and their safety and well-being comes above all other considerations. So imagine if the federal government passed a law that could send people to jail for reporting those very concerns. Imagine if the teacher or healthcare professional looking after your child was restricted from going directly to law enforcement agencies to report violence or physical abuse or even sexual abuse. You would be outraged. We all would. Well, today, that law came into effect with the support of both major parties. But there was no outrage. In fact, it's barely been reported at all, and that's because it's not your children. It's these ones. This law seeks to make the disclosure in the interests of the patient a crime. Australia is currently holding 138 children in detention, 81 of those in the offshore facility on Nauru. Now, to give credit where it's due, the number of children peaked at 1,992 in 2013 under the former Labor government and has been falling since. And the PM has pledged to release all children from onshore detention. But in the meantime, the Australian Border Force Act makes it a criminal offence for workers in detention centres to reveal anything that happens to those children to anyone without permission from the Department of Immigration and Border Protection. And that might be OK if that particular department didn't have a history of allegedly ignoring, denying and concealing reports of harm and neglect. It might be OK if that department wasn't facing serious allegations of child abuse from the Human Rights Commission. It might be OK if, when those allegations were revealed, the response we got wasn't this. The Human Rights Commission ought to be ashamed of itself. This law is designed to do one thing, that is prevent scrutiny by the media, by the community and, in fact, by the world of Australia's detention centres and the shame of those detention centres. The government's explanation for these provisions is that they want to keep secret information secret. Now, that raises lots of questions and, unfortunately, the Minister refused our invitation to appear tonight. The opposition supported the laws, but they can't tell us what they're for. Shadow Immigration Minister Richard Miles would only say that he believes staff are protected by whistleblower legislation. The problem is that legal experts say that that's far from guaranteed. The fact that the Shadow Minister is talking about the whistleblower legislation suggests that he doesn't even know about Section 48 of the Border Force Act, in which case he really doesn't know what he's talking about and he doesn't know how dreadful the legislation is that his party has just supported through the Parliament. So what is this information that has to be so secret? Well, it's information about a 16-year-old boy who tried to harm himself by drinking insect repellent, about toddlers forced to walk through other people's urine and faeces to use the toilet, about women who've had abortions rather than give birth behind bars. As of today, humanitarian workers can be jailed for two years for exposing stories like those. It's clearly a threat to people that are considering talking about the terrible things that they've seen. But not everyone is prepared to stay silent. Today, an incredibly brave group of medical staff and humanitarian workers co-signed an open letter vowing to continue advocating for people in their care, despite the threat of imprisonment. I'm not prepared to be silenced by this sort of legislation and we are challenging the government to prosecute us. Today, the new Border Force Commissioner said it was highly unlikely medical staff would be charged under the legislation. But I suspect they'd prefer a guarantee. Well, it's a threat, but of course, even the threat of litigation is enough to put some people off. These people are risking not just their jobs, but two years of their lives because they believe in protecting the human rights of people under their care. Several of the signatories agonised long and hard about whether they would sign this letter and put ourselves at risk. At some point we have to stand up, and this is the point which I'm choosing to stand up, along with many others. Look, we all want to stop the boats. But here's the thing. The department has told us that brutalising asylum seekers is not part of asylum seeker policy. So a law that hides the abuse isn't about stopping the boats. This law is not about stopping the boats. And if it's not about protecting our borders, it can only be about one thing, and that's protecting our politicians.